August 17, 2021 meeting of the Lawrence County Board of Commissioners. Uh, would all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mrs. Lamb, would you be so kind as to lead us in the pledge? Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And all please remain standing for a brief moment of silence. Thank you. Vanessa, please follow along. Commissioner Bill Here. Commissioner Butler. Here. Commissioner Boyd. Here. We have quorum. You did good, by the way, with the reaction time. Some people, they fumble it their first time around. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we'd be putting you to work today. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, I will note that we are being live streamed, being uh, broadcast for our YouTube channel for public consumption. Um, anyone who is viewing via the YouTube channel, whether they uh, cannot make it here in person or whether they... Uh, are still a little bit fearful of, of COVID-19, the Delta variant. Um, they're welcome to submit public comments to us at mboyd at, at lawrencecountypa.gov. That's mboyd at lawrencecountypa.gov. Um, please signal in subject line that it's public comment, and we will enter it uh, into the record as such. Uh, row officer reports these comments. Looking around, I'm not seeing any representatives of row officers with us today. Um, public comments. Do we have any member of the public here who wishes to make comment? We can still make one at the end. Absolutely. We're in good shape, uh, fiscal and contractual. Uh, we have no advertising, no proposals, no receipt of business proposals, no fiscal reports, no report on quotes. We do have two warrant registers dated August uh, 10th and August 13th, 2021. I'll give my colleagues a minute to check those over and take a motion to accept and file the warrant register. So moved. Please bear with me. Mm -hmm. I will second the motion. All right, we have a motion to second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, question the motion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All about the same sign, the motion carries. Um, up next, we have approval of Tuesday, August 10th, 2021 meeting minutes. Uh, again, I'll give my colleagues a minute to check those over and take a motion um, to approve the minutes or make any necessary expedient changes. Second. Two motions second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. Question the motion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, we have one presentation of written communications today. Um, it's a municipal notification of a planned land development for Chapter 102 permits for Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania. This is a development located in Slippery Rock um, Township. Uh, as it reads, the project is proposing to install a plastic pipeline via open cut and directional board, primarily through existing utility right away in meadow condition. Um, and along existing roads, ENS controls will include uh, compost filter soft water bowls, uh, bars, trench plugs, and erosion control blanket. Um, and the location is unnamed tributary at Slippery Rock Creek and then Slippery Rock Creek uh, and Brush Run. Um, again, this is taking place in Slippery Rock Township. Um, as I always note with these, uh, when certain entities apply for different permits in Pennsylvania, they are required to notify the Board of Commissioners. Um, of their permit application, board commissioners has no approval authority over such permits, which is required under state law uh, to be notified. Um, but unless there's any comments, I will take a uh, motion to accept and file for this one. So moved. Second. The motion is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, question the motion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <laughs> <sign. laughs> staff reports. We have any member of staff here with us today who has anything to report above and beyond what's already on the agenda? Nothing new at, at MHDS? Yeah. All right. Saw you guys at the fair yesterday. Good job. It was fun to, fun to, to play around with the dogs a little bit. <laughs> but nice booth. Um, I'll move on to uh, commissioner reports and comments. First on deck today is Loretta. You have the floor. No. Um, nothing prepared, but off the top of my head, since, um, you know, we are, we, the county has been moved to the um, high level of transmission for the uh, 
for COVID. And, you know, I'm not getting into any type of a, a vaccination debate or not, but let's at least get back to even the basics, you know, with, the, with hygiene, washing your hands, using hand sanitizer, things like that, um, and, and see what we can do to all try to uh, uh, stop the spread. We need to do what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, you're on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Two things, uh, Mr. Boyd, Chairman Boyd referenced the uh, fair which opened yesterday and uh, I had the pleasure of attending the, uh, the opening ceremonies along with Mr. Versilla from the Elwood Ledger felt bad because it just the skies opened up just to say we're cutting the ribbon and raising the flag. And uh -huh. bad for some of the folks that were there for that. Mm. I did have the pleasure of running into a former commissioner Ed Fosnott and his family were there, and uh, at least two, maybe three of his grandchildren. But Ed looks well. And it was nice to nice to see Ed. Nice to chat with him. The second and final note I'll make it's 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 a PennDOT matter, and of course PennDOT's a state agency, but we don't uh, have jurisdiction over PennDOT. But I want to remind everybody uh, that if you're hoping to uh, enter Interstate 376. From Mitchell Road in the Shannock Township. Uh, if you're heading towards Sharon, you're okay. You, you, you can get on to 376, but if you're wanting to head east, even though it feels like you're really going <laughs> south, but if, you're, if you uh, want to head east, uh, you can't. They're repairing the bridge. Uh, the same is true if you're, uh, if you're coming from, let's say, Union Township from Walmart, perhaps, and you're heading west on 376, you are able to exit to Mitchell Road. However, if you're coming from Sharon or West Middlesex, you cannot exit to get onto Mitchell Road. So I just want to, a lot of people use that artery and uh, just wanted to remind everybody of the uh, closure as they do the bridge repair. Apparently an overhyped truck a number of months ago hit the bridge and, and caused some structural damage to it. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I'll just pass for today. If you have any updates on the uh, Union Township project or something else, we'll give them next week. Sure. Moving on to new business. Uh, we have Director Baldwin with NHDS here. Uh, resolution for discussion possible approval to enter into a contract with Human Services Center. Scott, if you'd be able to approach the bench. Um, and Vanessa, what, uh, what resolution number will this be? 197. 197, thank you. Scott, how are you doing today? Good morning, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Floor is yours. What do we have going on? Okay. So this is a uh, renewal contract um, in which the the Human Services Center. This contract will run from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Contract is not to exceed $3,709,528 and is paid by a block grant funding. Um, and it's a large amount of the center. I was going to say, it better not go over $3 million. <laughs> The center historically right. has been our community yes. mental health center. They provide really the vast majority of our mental health services. This is including our residential programs, case management, crisis intervention, uh, outpatient services for both mental health and intellectually disabled consumers. Um, so just a couple of notes though. We do have uh, two new programs. One and then I guess in the spirit of the fair is a new farming initiative that really stemmed from a round table that Senator Elder Vogler had a couple years ago. Oh, well, oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I always tell people, we get, forgive me, yeah. people get our names mixed up right. all the time because they're very similar. Yeah. He's Vogel, I'm Vogler, but I always tell people, fortunately for him, we're not related. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dan. No, no, that's fine. Um, we had a round table with bringing awareness to uh, the mental, the mental health and farming community. So we, with Human Services Center, it's a new service that we started. It'll be more geared toward that culture. Um, and then our comfort canines, uh, the human services, our animal assisted therapy program, which is up the fair this year. So if you're at our table, so I want our dog to But um, that's it for human services, if you have any questions. Questions, comments? No questions. No. All right, what do we have going on for uh, rehab links? And we'll make this uh, 198. This uh, this was our early intervention coordinator uh, identified a need to bring in another provider. 
for our for the three year old. So this is uh, a new contract between MHDS and Rehab Links. The contract will run from July first, twenty twenty one, to June thirtieth, twenty twenty two. There are no dollar amounts attached to this provider. It is an it's entitlement programs where there's a reject policy. Um, this was brought in as an additional need to do these birth assessments for evaluations for kids that may have potential disabilities. I know I just did all of those weeks ago, but this was a new one that we were doing. So. In terms of the funding for that, correct me if I'm wrong, with early intervention specifically, like you said, it's, it's a no reject policy. In other words, anybody that comes into the system um, we're, we're under state law mandated um, to take a look at. Uh, my understanding how funding works for that is they give us a base amount of dollars, and then if we exceed that amount, they make us whole at the end of the year. Is that accurate? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and it's based on, we just don't know how many we have, so you're, you're absolutely correct. Gotcha. Just wanted to clarify that for anybody wondering how the money works on that one. All right, uh, questions, additional questions, comments? I do have a quick one. Where are they headquartered? Donnerville, Pennsylvania. Westmoreland County, most likely. Yeah, okay. Thank you. We have to reach out for some of those. So. <laughs> sure. Thank you. All right. Okay. Squad, thank you very much. I don't think you'll have any issue with any of those passing. You're welcome to stick around for the rest of the show or if you have to take off somewhere else. We understand. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Up next, great program. Um, yes. Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, like this 1099. Uh, this is the TEFAP program. Um, what it is, is it's effectively the Department of Agriculture uh, through appropriation by uh, the state legislature um, is awarded a, a sizable amount of dollars to help alleviate food insecurity in uh, counties all across the Commonwealth. So every county um, every year receives an allocation of dollars specifically for um, food programs. Um, this uh, resolution authorizes the uh, Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank to act as the county's lead agency. Um, for and the, the acronym is the distribution of temporary emergency assistance food program um, from October 1, 2021 through September 30th, 2026. Um, they've historically administered the program for us. They've done a good job. But through this program, um, different uh, food banks in Lawrence County are able to go to the Greater Pittsburgh Area Food Bank um, to get supplies. It basically acts as a centralized hub for some of our local um, local suppliers here. But they've done a good job. Last year, I don't have the award amount in front of me. Um, right now for future years, but uh, this past fiscal, our award amount was uh, just under $150,000. Um, so they do, a, they do a fine job. And actually, they, they helped out a lot with, with specifically related to COVID. Um, I know a large number of community organizations tapped into that program um, to make sure that the residents all across the county um, did not have to go without food, even though they might have been laid off. Questions, comments on that program? No. Real quick, I, and I, I concur. You, they, they do wonderful work. Uh, Amy might remember, because you've, you've come to a lot of our commissioner meetings, but I, I seem to recall, not often, but maybe two or three times since I've been here, folks from the Greater Pittsburgh Food Bank would come up and make a presentation to us. And it was always, uh, do, you, do you recall that? Can you, mm -hmm. do you recall that happening at least once or twice? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe next year we might invite them just to come in and tell sure. us a little more about what sure. they do. It's very informative. Absolutely. Uh, you covered it well, but the, mm -hmm. it's nice having them come up and give us a lot of details. So maybe something to think about next year. Well, they're able to dig into the data much more than I'd be able to you know, X amount of uh, distributions oh, right. made, right. all the different agencies that are supplying. Right. Um, right. No, they, do a, they do a fine job. Yeah, next year I'll give, I'll give someone a call and have okay. them come down. Thank right. you. Uh, 199. <clears throat> Up next, this is a great amendment. Um, budget amendment resolution uh, <coughs> received a, a hell of a lot more in grant funding than we anticipated from the FAIR account. The FAIR, uh, not being Lawrence County FAIR, mm -hmm. as we talked about earlier, but it being. What's a PH? A PH, <laughs> uh, ARE. Um, and what this funding is for, we actually received dollars um, both to. Uh, Lawrence County proper, Lawrence County as an entity, as well as Lawrence County Redevelopment Authority. Fair funding goes to housing rehab and demolition programming um, in the county. Uh, the bulkhead of this, um, what we're able to use for demolition, uh, it's going to be used yes. uh, to tear down uh, remaining repository structures right now. I believe uh, out to contrary, there are 38 structures left down from 39 a couple weeks ago. Um, we have active bids out on six of those, so there's 32 structures left. Um, and this funding 
uh, is largely going to go towards completing those demolitions and, and getting that uh, getting those issues uh, remediated. Um, but yeah, we received we received a lot more than we're anticipating, and we're certainly going to take it. Um, and just glad of the work that the yes. yes. our planning office does in administering uh, the Lawrence County Blight uh, Reduction Program. Questions, comments? Can you, can you take one comments from the floor? Uh, if, if, no. if you have a question, we'll take it now. Yeah, uh, you just, uh, how do you, is that mostly residential uh, properties? It's historically, and Dan might be able to provide better, better insight into this just because we've been sort of sidetracked with COVID. Uh, but historically, it's largely been residential properties. But the process for which um, these funds are utilized is if it's in the repository itself, um, generally, we don't require any additional approvals to get it to get it demoed and deploy those dollars that way. If it's in a municipality, and the municipality has identified it as needing to be torn down. Um, the municipality, whether that be Shenango, Mahoning, Elwood, etc., submits to our planning office, our redevelopment office, um, basically requests for demolition. Those requests are compiled. They're brought before the county redevelopment authority, and the redevelopment authority selects projects to take out the bid demo. And is that an, it, 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 you have more than enough money to do that, or is that not enough to do the, the, the money that you're talking about? You thought it was more than expected. Is that going to be more than you need? Well, or? for our repository property, with the exception of Lincoln Garfield School in the city of Newcastle, which the city is handling, um, I believe that this amount plus the redevelopment authority itself got $250,000, which is a total $650,000. Some of that has to be used for housing rehab as opposed to demolition. Um, but it should be roughly enough to tear down existing uh, repository structures, all of them, uh, in Lawrence County with the exceptional Lincoln Garfield based on our current estimates. And then next year, um, you know, we will have more submissions from municipalities if we get more funding um, and, you know, continue to help our municipalities out that way, as well as any additional properties that might be brought into the repository. Thank you. Absolutely. Amy McKinney, our planning director, corresponds with all 27 boroughs and townships and the city of Newcastle, advising them that these funds are available. And a good number of the municipalities have, have responded to her. And uh, if you'd ever want all the real details, we've kind of given you the overview, but Amy's office is just right around the corner. Be very welcome to meet with her or talk with her. She'd be happy to show you all the specifics. Thank you. Uh, any additional questions, comments? All right, make that 200. Uh, IT, we are doing a budget amendment from Central Services Miscellaneous Admin, 100,000 IT maintenance and repair. Um, reason for this is I think this is the generator that we purchased, um, backfilling, uh, backfilling dollars for that generator to make sure that in the event the power goes down again, um, the RIT. Excuse me, our IT systems remain online operational. We don't want to run into any hiccups. Speaking of that, and I, I think it happened early last week, uh, maybe at about quarter after seven, we had a very, very brief power outage. Okay. And um, I mean, just two seconds. Right. But it was long enough to turn everybody's computer off and then it affected oh, wow. the uh, cooling system. Frank's folks had to scramble to get the cooling system back up. Wanted to let you know. I'd forgotten to tell you that okay. we did have a brief power outage. <laughs> Having more and more of those recently. I'll make that 201 question comment. Um, and finally, our admin transfer for the day. Um, we are moving from hospital post mortem expense $5,000 uh, into the coroner's per diem account. Um, coroner's been doing a great job saving on hospital and mm -hmm. post mortem. Uh, throughout the year, and so there's a, a very sizable amount of funds in that account uh, that, that we're able to utilize as necessary to mm -hmm. be able to transfer to different accounts. Um, he's asking to transfer five grand of that into his per diems. Questions, comments on that? Uh, I'll take a motion to approve administrative transfer A. So moved. Second. We have a motion second. Any further discussion here? Not a question of motion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I'll take a motion to amend the agenda to allow for voting on resolutions 2021-197 uh, through 2021-201. So moved. Second. The motion is second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, question the motion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, 
Resolution 2021-197, added to be resolved by Lawrence County Board of Commissioners, the agreement listed in item two shall be approved starting July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Authorization is hereby going to execute the following addendum. Human Services Center Inc. is detailed in the attachment designated as 2021-2022. Program description rates are also listed in the attachment. Um, be further resolved as payments you made from the MHDH fund, um, MHDS fund. Uh, any questions, comments on that? Do we have a motion? Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Vanessa, please call the roll. Commissioner Spielvogel? Yes. Commissioner Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution 2021-198, uh, to resolve by Lawrence County Board of Commissioners, the agreement listed on two shall be approved for the period of June, July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022. Authorization is hereby given to the following contracts. Uh, rehab link space is detailed on the attachment program rates and descriptions also listed within the attachment be further resolved in payments from the out of the MHDS fund. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion second. Any further discussion here? None, but that's please call the roll. Commissioner Steele Vogel? Yes. Commissioner Vogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution 2021-199, now that it's resolved by Lawrence County Board of Commissioners, the authorization is given to extend the agreement of understanding with Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank to act as the county's lead agency for distribution of temporary assistance food program, TFAP, from October 1, 2021 through September 30, 2026. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. The motion is second. Ready for a discussion here? None. Question of motion. Please call the roll. Commissioner Spielvogel? Yes. Commissioner Gobler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution 2021-200. Uh, now to be, therefore be resolved by Lawrence County Board of Commissioners to amount the 2021 Lawrence County budget as follows. Increase in the fair grant revenue account by $400,000 mm -hmm. and increase in the fair grant um, expense account by $400,000. So we have a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Doing further discussion here. None. Question on the motion. Message call the roll. Commissioner Spielberg? Yes. Commissioner Bogler? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, no awards on the table for introduction or for final. Oh, wait, Miss the IT. Miss the IT. <laughs> Every once in a while we slip up. Uh, that's that's one of the reasons I'm glad I have two colleagues who are smarter than I am. Um, resolution 2021-201, out of the resolved by Lawrence County Board of Commissioners, an authorization is hereby given to the appropriate administrative officials transfer total $10,000 described in the uh, attachment de designated as T-2021-11. Do we have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion here? question on the motion? Do we have a motion? Second. Uh, Vanessa, please call the roll. Commissioner Steele Yes. Commissioner Robert? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Chair. I have a question that's a procedural, legal, technical question that we we may want to consult with our solicitor about, or perhaps the three of you are way ahead of me on this. The uh, legislature, as you know, uh, amended the Sunshine Law and implemented a number of new provisions that I think take effect by sometime by the end of the month. In terms of uh, posting of the agenda in advance mm -hmm. of the meeting, et cetera, et cetera. One of the items I saw, and I probably should have focused more on it than I did, but as you know, we've been following a process where we have resolutions introduced, we discuss them, right. we get input from department heads when appropriate, and then in most instances, we then, as, as noted, we amend the agenda right. to then vote on. Yes. Once in a while, we'll hold them over a week right. if there's a question, if, if there's something that we need more information on. And again, maybe, maybe one of the three of you can answer this. I'm wondering if that process whereby we take a formal action to amend the agenda to consider these proposed resolutions. If, if this new law affects that in any way, do either or do any of the three of you know the answer to that? Because I don't. I don't know. I, I would state maybe a, a assumption that we're either A, going to have to formally put something on the agenda stating that, um, you know, a motion will be made to amend the agenda to allow for voting on those items, or alternatively, um, as opposed to even making that motion, uh, treat each individual resolution um, as a vote, and worst case scenario, we can table it if necessary to a future. I see meeting. what you're saying. In other words, when, when for example, when, when the first one came up, when Scott's first one yes. came up, upon conclusion of his report, to us, then we take the vote. Yep. Okay. I, I, I'd like if we could just maybe any one of us, whoever sees the attorney Medora yes. first, if we could just ask him to clarify. You're probably right. But if we could ask him to clarify that, because obviously I don't want to violate the law because I don't want to go to jail. 
Yes. <laughs> 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 three square wheels a day and a shuttle. And, and I think that um, that was brought up. At, I don't remember which um, municipality it was, but their solicitor brought it up that in the future, amending the agenda, you are not going to be able to amend the agenda once this law takes effect. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they were voting on resolutions or not, but when you, as soon as you said I have a question on on the new law, it a little little buzzer went off. Not a loud one, but a little one. I, I remembered him saying that that was not that whatever they were doing with the amending the agenda to approve something right. was not going to be able to be done. Now, what the solution was, I don't know if they got into it as okay. far as that went, but yeah, good question. And, and I, I'm good wondering question about to maybe, do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. make each one as it comes. As it turns out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if one of us could, whoever sees Mr. McCoy right. first, if we could ask him. Good question. spot because it does take effect by the end of the month. September 7th will be the first day of okay. implementation for us. Thank you uh, for your help. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, now the ordinances, we don't have any. Right. <laughs> Up next, announcements. Our next commissioner's meeting will be held on Tuesday, August 24, 2021, at 10 a.m. in this room. Uh, there will be a retirement board meeting today. Um, immediately following the commissioner's meeting, by immediately following, I mean probably 15 minutes or so from now. Um, am I missing anything? Just the prison board meeting uh, tomorrow as well. Okay. And the meetings that my colleagues just referenced, the retirement board and the prison board, are open to the public. Um, any additional public comments at this time? Floor is <laughs> okay. A couple comments first. Sure. Um, I love what you're doing with Piper Falls out there. I'm a bike rider, and um, will there be a bike trail out there too at Piper Falls? I believe so. I doubt it. Okay. But I love photography. You forgive me. You've been on the Stavix Trail. Yeah, we, we, we do that. We go to Louisville and have a big lunch and come back. So, but that's wonderful. Um, then the second one, um, Loretta, I wanted to say about the COVID. I have my shots, but I was at challenges yesterday and a woman was bragging. She's not getting her shots and she's there and she's not wearing a mask. And that's shows disrespect for the rest of us. You know, so I'm glad you mentioned that. Then my question is the same one. The house on 18 that we bought for the district justice, is it just sitting there and we're still paying taxes on it? Uh, it? You're talking about the one in the Shannon Township? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, right now we're still formulating a plan as to, as to what to do with that. Okay, okay. The, and then, there are no taxes are no being taxes. paid since we own it. Right. Oh, yeah. we're not paying taxes. We're not. We're, we're not. Oh. It's county owned. It's tax exempt exactly. because it's owned by the county. Uh, I I did know that. I'm sorry. For You're that. fine. And then in paper the other day they mentioned that there was a 70 percent that the census did not do in Lawrence County, and I wondered where you got that figure. I happen to work for the census in an office in Cranberry, and I know we sent people out pounding on doors and sent letters and made them go back pounding on doors. Um, and people were mad at us that we kept sending them back out and out and out. And we got phone calls from people going, why are you bothering us? You know, and so I wondered where you got that. Uh, that's why I'm here. Well, where you got that figure of 70% of Lawrence County was not covered. No, they did. That maybe it was a misprint in the article, but that um, at least, to the best of my recollection, at least 70% of the residents of Lawrence County did respond. Did, not did not. Okay. So if it was a misprint, it was a misprint. Yeah, we'll, we'll clarify that. No, that I, was, I probably took it wrong. <laughs> I took that kind of personal. I remember the exact numbers how we finished. I knew that we were... We were at like 68 percent, mm -hmm. but but we hadn't the the, the um, counting hadn't finished, and so I I said I know we had to get to at least 70 percent right. that did respond. Yeah. So that whether it was uh, a misprint or not, but because um, I know we, maybe, but yes, we yes, in we the office closely yes. for for the while that it was going on and happening. Mm -hmm. I know I I brought it up, and I think at one point in time. Um, we were statistically close to seventy percent, and uh, and everybody, and that's when there were the second letters being sent out, third letters, phone calls, the online portals were open, 
we would discuss the many different ways that people could respond to it. Because in the office, we got calls from people that I went to your house straight. I didn't, yeah. but <laughs> went to your house. And yes. Why are you bothering us? And, right. and yeah. um, you know, yeah. we really tried. So yes. kind of yes. I'm hoping that it's actually higher, but I didn't have an exact number mm -hmm. when I was when I was asked about it. But I, I knew that I could safely say that at least 70 percent. And it's too bad that they don't realize, you know, we're not trying to get them if they're here illegal. We're trying to see, you know, where our, our boundaries are sure. and things. We sure. weren't trying to hurt anybody. Right. We were trying Absolutely. to help you know institutions and things right. that need more money absolutely so but thank you i'm glad you can no i'm glad you came and asked the question that way it's clarified mm -hmm. yeah sure thank you absolutely any additional yes so, you know in the other parts of the state a couple other uh, uh, counties have been asked to submit uh, uh, data and information on the vote for an audit sure is, is there been any uh, request to the Lawrence county not no. no. Is there any intention to, to audit the vote here? The vote in Lawrence County has been audited twice. Uh, it's been audited uh, once. They do a statistical audit, and twice, uh, Ed would be better prepared to explain this than I would. I don't completely understand exactly what goes into it. I can definitively say the vote in Lawrence County has been audited twice by under state law, under state statute, um, and we have not we did not find any irregularities. Well, you know, other other areas of the country have been audited also, but there's been recent audit that uncovered you know irregularities that I'm I'm concerned about, and I, you know, as a ta as a voter and a taxpayer, I would like to recommend that they that you perform an audit in the, in the county. Well, I you know know the two have been performed. Okay, well, another one would be uh, not the same way, but we'll, I I would like you to, 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 to dig deeper in there with electronics and all that stuff. Uh, and you know, speaking of electronics, uh, you know, I know our votes were paper, then scanned. Mm -hmm. But then after that, is there? It, 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 there was even been found irregularities where there was chips in there that that added votes or subtracted votes from different candidates. The whole the whole countrywide. So I'm not I'm not familiar with that. Um, I will <laughs> say that you know, again, based on our testing of the machines, we have encountered no irregularities in Lawrence County's machines. Um, you know, I. We do, we do check that stuff out. The, um, the, the law permits, following an election, the law permits any individual to come in and petition for a recount if they believe there is a discrepancy. Mm -hmm. And now that we have the paper ballots, that's how that could have happened. Now, there's a time frame for the request for a recount. And to the best of my knowledge, following the 2020 election and, and even the 2021 primary, no one approached the county election office asking for any type of a recount, but that opportunity is there. I, I think it also needs to be noted that counties cannot and do not make their own rules as it relates to elections. There's an election code that consists of all the laws that have been passed by the legislature that tell counties what they can and cannot do as it relates to elections. That election code is the law. And our election office and the three of us as the Board of Elections are obligated to follow that law. We can't make up our own rules. And, and the reason it's done that way is so that there is consistency amongst the 67 counties. So that Lawrence County is following the same rule book that Butler County is following and that Cambria County is following, et cetera. Um, so we don't have authority legally to go above and beyond or outside of the parameters of the election code. And, and I give credit to Mr. Allison, who's our election director, because he's got that election code sitting on his desk and he refers to it consistently because that's the rule book that we're obligated to follow legally. We cannot deviate from it. And uh, um, Mr. Allison's off right now, but if you'd ever want to go in and talk to, there's three folks that work in that office, feel free to go in. They'll, they'll sit down with you uh, and show you what rules they have to follow. But uh, there are counties that there were inconsistencies, at least alleged, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and there, you know, there were requests for, for all the voting data and everything sent out, and I'm hoping that there'll be uh, subpoenas issued uh, waiting for that. And, uh, and, and so there are inconsistencies. The law is the law, but there's a lot of people who, who don't follow the law. And that's why 
That's why it's important. Well, I can make I can tell you definitively, and this is a testament again to our elections office. Uh, they follow those the laws to a T to the point where, uh, when anybody uh, needs to testify before the state senate, uh, state government committee, or, or the house state government committee, um, our elections director is actually the one that's called uh, many times to, to provide that testimony, um, and that's that's again a testament to him and what the state thinks of his operation. Uh, in Lawrence County, I'm only going to speak for Lawrence County because right. it was, you know we were here, we observed yes. that um, you know there was a commissioner on deck, um, and, you know every single minute, uh, every single second during uh, during the election, during tabulating the ballots, during the entire process. Um, and when it comes to Lawrence County, everything was done by the book. Um, in two audits, we encountered no discrepancies whatsoever. Um, our machines were tested. Uh, we encountered no discrepancies there whatsoever. Um, and I have no reason right now to suspect. Um, that any election irregularities occurred um, either in the 2020 election or the 2021 primary election in Lawrence County. I appreciate your confidence. I, I still would like to say it. I think it's going to come. I think it's going to come statewide. What mm -hmm. I think is going to happen. Well, if the, legisl if the legislature passes yeah. something or the legislature, um, you know, uh, moves to act in any way, shape, or form, um, you know, uh, at that point, that's I don't have any reason to cast any aspersions on the election board, but... I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything new. If you would like, when we when we conclude this meeting, if your schedule permits, I'd be happy to take you over and, and have you sit down with Mr. Germani. Uh, Susan's on. Susan's on the She's case. On, Susan yes. Kite's on. Yes. I'd be happy, very happy to have yes. you sit and talk with Mr. Mm -hmm. Germani, who's the deputy. Be very ha if if you have time. Well, I, I am pressed today. But okay. Uh, thank well, you for the offer. Whenever you'd right. like, the offer stands. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm David Foster from Little Beaver Township. Thank you. David G. Okay, thank you. This is David M. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> G and M. Good to have you with us today. Thanks for coming up, Little Beaver's yes. distance. Thanks for coming up from thank Little you. Beaver. Yes, definitely. Thank you. I just wanted to compliment Mr. David Gettings on his retirement yes. and all he has yes. done for our community, coming over and taking over after our debacle with our last treasurer and everything, and thank Mr. Gettings publicly. He has been a wonderful source for us in Lawrence County. He'll be missed. Yes, he will. When we see him, we'll pass along the call. He already knows. <laughs> <laughs> our sons were very good friends before Albert walked up. Thank you. Let's see anything uh, additional, any additional public comments? Any additional comments from my colleagues? No, thank you. Joe, but ask anything from you, Joe? No. Good shape. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion during non question on motion? All in favor, please by saying aye. 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 All uh, opposed, same sign motion. Do you want to give your packet to Nick or do you Listen, want me to? I, I believe that, that Nick um, is a mind reader and, and he, he, he absorbs all this information. <laughs> he does some kind of shorthand over there on his, on his notepad that he You need a packet, Nick. No, thank you.